Hey guys, it's Jeff. Um, today we're gonna go over the YDS software and how to hook it up to your Yamaha jet boat. Enjoy. Okay guys, um, again, today we're going over this YDS software. Uh, gotta have a couple things to make this work. Obviously you gotta have the software, you gotta have an interface cable, computer, and something Yamaha that'll work with. Uh, I can tell you right now, I bought mine off Amazon. You pretty much find them everywhere. Amazon, eBay, they're like 55 bucks. And it's all, like this is just a burnt CD. It's just, it's pirated. And uh, uh, that's pretty much it. Cable, just a basic cable. It's actually just a USB to an OBD2 cable here. And then it's got an OBD2 to this Yamaha um, three wire adapter. Gotta have a CD drive to install this on a computer. Um, once you have it installed, you do not need the CD anymore. You do not need it. Uh, it's on a Windows-based computer. It's pretty easy to install if you if you follow the instructions. <laughs> I actually contacted the guy on Amazon about this. Said, "Hey, dude, this is pirated." He just refunded me, no questions asked. And that's probably why you find their listings kind of go like they have a listing and then they go away and then they come back. And that's all it is, dude. It's just they're pretty much just selling you a cable and throwing this burnt CD in for free. Uh, you could actually once you install it, you could give this to a buddy. You still got to buy the cable. It is what it is. So today we're going to go over how to how to hook this up to your boat, how to actually use it, and we'll go from there. Alrighty, guys. So to get access to um, to hook this up uh, to your boat, you got to remove this little inspection cover right here. Um, as what I do is I remove all the screws except this one right here, and then the cover can swing down, and you'll see. Okay, so take my cover and I just kind of slid my cover out of the way and I already have tape on mine um, how you can identify it, you should have these little caps that are attached to the actual connector and once you do this I would label them port and starboard this makes it easier and today we're just gonna deal with this port connector right here and we'll go ahead and get this undone and so all we're doing is we're, we're disconnecting it from the main harness this this red wire right here the reason it's connected that red wire actually leads up to your gauge and that's what informs you of a malfunction and so let me go ahead and get this disconnected and we'll hook it up and again to disconnect it all you do is you push this down pull it apart this one with the wires the three wires is the one you need and we're just going to set this out and hook up our connector all right so i got it hooked up everything's connected um in order to um turn the ecu on um all you have to do is just bump start the engine uh, so I'm on the port engine, which would be my that engine right there. So that's why I have this set on the right. I'm just going to go ahead and, and just give it a bump. On. And there you go. That's all you got to do. Just get it to crank. And now that we're in, I'm going to go ahead and show you what we need to do here. Okay, so we gave the motor a crank. We're on the port. I just want you guys to know what I'm doing for you. It's a thousand degrees out. I had to put this up so you guys can see the screen real well. Real well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna go ahead and hit enter, and we're gonna press every key. Yep, there's a bunch of warnings. Yada yada yada. All right, guys. So now we're we're back. So we're on the main screen here. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the scan tool function. Um, now that we're in here, what probably most people are gonna want to see is under the data logger. And what we're looking for is the engine hours graph. Uh, this right here is gonna break it down for you. Um, engine speed from zero to 2000, this is what it's telling you as far as how much time it's spent. You have your engine hours here at the bottom, 247. That's the, um, over, that's the accumulative between all your different RPM ranges that you have here. So it looks like for my boat, six to 8,000 RPMs uh, is where it spends most of its time and then the rest here is at no wake mode. Um, which is pretty good uh, 10 to 2000 you know that's just uh, that's the maximum you're probably gonna see very little there uh, and um, and that's just a really cool feature so you can use this for maintaining your your fluids or greasing or just to know obviously we're gonna go back through now we'll go through all the different features we're gonna start up here with number one the diagnosis if you have um, uh, any issues um, you're gonna see what is going on. So here's all your different. Oh, 
all your different um, engine code related issues. So number 13, uh, pulse or coil. So these are all your, these are the codes. These would be the items. And if you had a fault, you'd see it right here and everything looks great. And it just goes through everything. Everything looks good. Uh, we would go to the diagnosis record. Say you were out driving and you had a fault like an overheat, which is very, an overheat code would be very common with these boats. The reason you get an overheat code is because you pick something up um, in the jet pump and it started cavitating. Of course, when it cavitates, it can't push, it can't push the, the, the water through the engine to cool it. And you would typically get an overheat warning, um, which you'd see right here. And of course, to delete all these codes, you just go down here to um, delete and bada bing, bada boom. Uh, engine monitor. This is the engine monitor test. Of course, my engine is off right now, um, but you can see all the different things. So like, for example, engine stop, lanyard switch. Mine is off. Let's come over here. Let's grab that. And as you can see, my engine stop lanyard is now on. So this is a great tool, especially if you have a no start situation. I'm gonna plug that back in before I forget. If you had a no start situation and you're trying to determine Right, we got that plugged back in. So if you had a no start situation and you're trying to determine is my lanyard switch, is it my lanyard switch, uh, is it something else? That's a that's a great way um, to uh, to do that. Um, slant detection switch. I'm not sure what that one is. Um, I don't know if that might just be a um, like they use on their street bikes. Say the uh, boat got flipped over, would automatically shut it off. I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, so that that's your engine monitor stationary tests um, You can select different tests um, engine coil one and two selected And you can go ahead and select this test um, I've never ran any of these um, operate the electric fuel pump this right here will probably energize the fuel pump so you can check fuel pressure and I'm just assuming just from my years as an automotive tech. So now it's our stationary tests active tests these are probably, you can probably drop cylinders. So say you have a misfire on a certain cylinder, you could, um, say you think cylinder one is shit, you can drop that cylinder, see if you see any change in um, engine performance, yada yada. What else we got here? Um, that's our active test. Data logger, um, data comparison graph. Um, this is where you can probably you can probably graph. You could probably graph this, and that way you can watch. There you go. So this is a simple graph, nothing crazy. And then some files. I guess this is just to load a data graph in to view it. Not 100% sure, but that's it. So that's the gist of it. All used um, by that plug right there. Um, and that's it. Hope you guys enjoy, pretty simple.